This here used to be an E36 M3. As you can tell, it's not an E36 M3 anymore. We take everything that used to be this car and put it into an E30. Check it out. Okay, one M power drivetrain ready for transplant. Uh, yeah, got an engine out. Um, so basically the plan is we take the engine off this subframe, switch the oil pan, put the new E34 pan and pickup tube on it, uh, put the E28 mounts into it off of one of our other parts cars, rip the M20 out, <laughs> stick her in, and we'll be done. Let's train you. All right. This is a 318 IS. I literally know nothing about it. I bought it on a whim in one day. Uh, it's got a half-ass installed M20 in it, which we are going to use for parts for the stroker videos. So, sorry we're lagging behind on that, but we were kind of waiting on this. Anyway, um, this is the first time we've been under it. It's decent. Oh, yeah. it's got a swap brace, what the heck? In a stock 260. It's not a swap brace. Ooh. It's like homeboys build. Weird. Uh, and it doesn't get cracked. Okay. So apparently this car was put together with a bunch of spare parts. Um, which is fine, whatever, because we're basically replacing the entire everything. Uh, so Aaron and I, right now, we're gonna drop everything and prep it for a uh, S52. Obviously, we're just gonna get everything ready. I don't think we're gonna do it in one day. We'll probably finish it tomorrow. Regardless, doesn't matter. So here's a list of things we're gonna do. Uh, brake booster's gotta come out. Doesn't fit with a 24 valve. Uh, we're gonna put an E21 booster in it. I'm going to attempt to use the OBD2 uh, S52 E36 M3, that's a lot of acronyms. Uh, fuel pressure regulator and fuel filter. Should work. So that way we don't have to swap the fuel rail for fuel pressure. Um, I'm going to also attempt to reuse the E36 M3 fuel pump. We'll see how that works. Don't know if that works. Um, yeah, what else do we need to do? Not much, right? Control the booster and all that. Out. Yeah, booster's coming out. Gotta get the E28 mounts on it. Yep. We're gonna steal E28 mounts from that crappy parts car sitting out the lot. Just gotta swap the E34 pan on and Once we get all the prep done, it'll take us two hours to get this thing running and driving. Quote me. All right, so we're done with the world's fastest engine pull. That took us a grand total of like nine minutes. That was cool. Uh, so now we're gonna uh, pull a bunch of stuff, put a bunch of stuff on and get the engine ready, put in. Basically, like I said before, booster, getting swapped for an E21 booster. We're gonna be putting a fuel pressure regulator uh, in line with the supply line off of the E36 M3, ba-bam. Uh, if the fuel pump works, we'll use that. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, and then once we get that, we swap the pan around and stick her in and we'll be done. You know, something like that. All right guys, so we got our S52 and trans hanging here. It's gonna be ready for the C30 tonight before we leave and then we're gonna get the rest of the parts in the morning. Uh, but what we just did is we swapped the E36 pan, which is rear sump with a rear sump pickup to a front sump E34 pan with a front sump pickup, which you have to have for any 24 valve E30 swap. If you're any motor you put in an E30 has to be front sump. Uh, with or you better be really good at fabrication if not. Uh, but that this is the trick to doing 24 valve swaps in E30 is using E34 M50 oil pans, which Will is cleaning one right now to put in. Uh, other than that, we got the fuel system dialed, we got everything apart, just a couple parts later, and we'll have this thing bolted. Uh, hopefully tomorrow afternoon we'll be doing some burnouts for you guys to see. Hello YouTube, welcome to the next day. On today's episode, we are doing booster things. Actually, no, for real. Check this out. So, yeah, welcome back. It's the next day. Uh, we're about to stab the engine in. We uh, got carried away with beers last night, so uh, progress didn't really happen. This is a BMW E21 booster. This is a stock BMW E30 booster. 
uh, as you can see, it's smaller. However, we do have one problem, which is that the rod on this one is much longer than the rod on the stock BMW booster. So basically what you gotta do is cut the rod down to the same length from the mounting, uh, these guys, mounting bolts. So as you can see, it's like four inches longer. So we're gonna have to take a decent amount off that. And then you have to turn this down or grind it down or you know, redneck lathe it. And then you need to thread it for the same thread. You can't just swap the rod? No, I'm trying, at least not as far as I'm aware. I haven't done any Googling yet. Um, this is the first time I've tried to use an E21 booster. I've used 944 boosters and you had to do the same thing. I thought this was a straight swap, but apparently it's not. So um, yeah, we're gonna figure that out. And then I think we should actually be ready to put the engine in. We got all the fuel stuff figured out. All the engine mounts are on. Oh, fun fact for you, YouTube. If you guys are doing a, a 24 valve swap into an E30, this is a big six uh, E28 engine mount. This is a little six engine mount. You'll notice they're exactly the same. So no matter what E28 you get your engine mounts from, they work. Uh, which is a fun fact. I thought they were different, but apparently they're exactly the same. They have different part numbers, but dimensionally they're exactly the same. So I don't know what the difference is, but um, we are using M20 mounts for the S52. So that's cool. Yeah. And we already got the oil pan on. Yep, I uh, got the oil pan on last night. It's probably gonna leak copiously because we didn't seal it with anything. Um, but that's okay, it'll still run. You didn't use RTV or anything? Nah, we just sent it. Oh. And it's got a gasket, a reused one, but budget build, baby. Budget build. <laughs> but yeah, it's all the, it's on the subframe and everything. This looks like it's about ready to get stabbed back in. Yeah, it's pretty much ready. We just gotta figure out the booster situation here. So yeah. I'm gonna do some Googling and we'll get back to you. I just got done pulling an E34 booster and I've got some information for you, for you, those of you swap people. I know some of the information on the internet is growing stagnant with these swaps. It's all leftover crap from the early 2000s. Um, what we got here is an E21 booster right here. This is an E30 318 booster, which should be more or less the same dimensionally as all of the other ones. There may be some slight differences, but should be pretty much the same. Uh, and then we've got the E34 booster. So you'll notice that the E34 booster is thicker. It's got a couple differences here and there, but what matters for us, basically the reason this is like this is it's a double diaphragm booster. So you're actually gonna get more boost power out of this and an easier brake feel out of an E34 or E32 booster. I discovered that's, that they're the same. I may probably did not discover that, but I discovered it for myself today. Anyway, moving on, uh, one of the interesting things that we've got is the E21 booster, as you can see, the rod is way too long. So in order to get this to work, you would have to cut and rethread. So in order to get this to work, you would have to cut and rethread the, uh, the booster rod that connects to the pedal. So basically, this connects to your pedal, the pedal acts on the booster, the booster acts upon the master cylinder. I, I was really trying to avoid cutting and rethreading these. I've done it with a Porsche 944 booster before and it never really turns out good. So I wanted to explore other options. Um, the other option is we can move this booster about an, a quarter of an inch over and a quarter of an inch down and it fits great. You can actually just move it over and it's fine. The third option, which we're going to explore, I'm not sure whether or not this is gonna work yet. I think there might be some brake line uh, snafus that we gotta work out. The, uh, the rod length, as far as the mounting point on the firewall to the mounting point on your clevis here, which is, well, the clevis is technically the pin that goes through it, but this fork right here is what mounts to your brake pedal. And the distance from these bolts to the end of this rod at the nut is almost exactly the same. So, as a result, this booster should work for the S52 or any of the, e, uh, I'm sorry, the, the 24 valve swaps. So we're gonna give that a shot. But what I am concerned about is right here. You'll notice that there is a few subtle differences in the brake lines. On the E30, your large diameter line, actually these look like the same diameter lines. Um, on the E34 and 32, this is a 12 millimeter flared nut and this is an 11 millimeter flared nut. So there is a difference in diameter and size on these. Um, so I'm not really sure what we're gonna do there. We may have to make an adapter hose or something like that. First, I'm gonna mount it up and see how well it fits. And if it fits well, then we'll get an adapter hose made for the brakes. 
So, new discovery. Luckily, since we have a freaking BMW junkyard at our disposal here, um, went over here and checked out the E32 that we ripped the motor out of a while back for another car, and lo and behold, look what it has on it. The exact correct master cylinder. You'll notice that the lines more or less look the same, like the as far as you know the master, the bolt pattern is the same here. However, it's got two 11 millimeters. It's got the 11 millimeters instead of the, the 12 and the 11. Uh, so I'm just gonna take this master and instead of remaking brake lines, uh, we're just gonna swap the master out and we'll be good to go. Do so you think, uh, I think that's like, all are the lines hard lined into a different position? Like are you gonna have an issue fitting it onto the... Shouldn't, but we'll find out. I mean, this is all, I, I haven't done this before, so we'll see what happens, but this should just bolt right up and, and work. We're gonna have to rework the lines just a little bit as far as like where they go, but um, as far as getting it in and getting it to fit and getting it to work, it should work just fine. In conclusion, for those of you who are doing this swap, E34 and E32 boosters, exactly the same. They will swap onto an E30. However, you need to use an E32 master cylinder uh, because it has the same bolt pattern uh, for the booster and as well as for the uh, master cylinder here, for the lines, the brake lines. Um, so if you guys are doing this, Snag one from a junkyard, there's E34s everywhere in junkyards. No one ever steals parts off of them, especially not the brake boosters. So steal that guy, and then just buy yourself a new master cylinder and you'll be good to go. I'm gonna uh, roll the dice on this one that's had water in it a bunch of times, so we'll see what happens, but uh, it should be fine. Swing! It's in! Uh, this seems to work freaking perfectly. So, as you can see, master bolts up perfectly. Also, as a bonus, it's a larger diameter, so it moves more fluid, more braking power. Also, more brake assist. Also, clutch line lines right up. This is the factory clutch line. I literally didn't do anything. Also, brake lines with a little bit of minor finessing. Plugged right in, screwed right in. Uh, the length on the, the rod coming out of the back of the booster was in fact the right one. So all that we did was we swapped the clevis fork on the back of the rod onto the new booster, new as in uh, E34 booster, new used booster. Anyway, so it went right in, uh, bolted right up, fits well. It's a much smaller diameter. Uh, and also as a bonus, I really like that it's away from the firewall. It's got this spacer plate. So that way it's much easier to get to the heater core hoses and you can actually switch the throttle cable or deal with the, uh, the clutch line if you need to. This actually just makes the car more serviceable. I'm actually a big fan of this. I think this is the way I'm gonna start doing it on all of them. Good afternoon guys. All right, we're uh, still here working on the S52 swapped E30 for uh, uh, the shop. We're kind of doing uh, an, uh, not even unethical, a different approach than typical. Uh, a lot of form information is, is wrong and a word to the wise, if you're going to use form information, make sure you know how to decipher the information because a lot of people don't know what they're talking about. And on this very project, we found a lot of cool ways to do cool things that people don't know about that are a lot easier than the typical uh, 24 valve E30 swap kind of things. A lot of keyboard warriors out there typing mm -hmm. some nonsense. But uh, uh, so here we go. We're just gonna give you guys kind of a rundown of the harness adapter to go between the E36 harness and your, your factory E30 harness. Uh, you, you have to have one of these. You can buy them pre-made. They are expensive. 10 minutes at a junkyard and a little bit of soldering equipment. This is all I've used so far. Uh, and you can do this. We're talking $10 worth of stuff, $15 maybe. Super easy. Yeah, yeah. So first thing you wanna do is get one of these diagrams. Uh, we're gonna link this to you because this one's really dirty. But it just tells you the pins, the wire colors, and what they do, and then what to hook them to. And another word to the wise, because we got this from a forum, uh, these wire colors can be wrong. A lot of times they are. Uh, they don't line up like they do in book. But the pins will be correct. So you always want to use the pin number. Don't go by wire color. Uh, you might end up finding yourself in a, a terrible situation doing that um, with no starts and chasing your tail on electrical problems. But uh, what we did here is we cut everything. You want to give yourself a good pigtail, you know, a couple inches. Uh, you can go long, shorter, whatever you're comfortable doing. Uh, the shorter you go, the cleaner you can kind of make it look, but don't make it hard on yourself. Like th this is about perfect. Uh, and anyway, all we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all the pin numbers, which I'm gonna put a light on one of these. If you look in these plugs, right around the pins, they are very small and kind, or can be hard to read. There are pin numbers on both of these, right around each pin at the base of them. They're small, like stamped in uh, numbers. So uh, yeah, what you wanna do is follow those numbers. Take your uh, voltmeter here, we got a handy dandy one here, and set it for continuity. Uh, pretty much just get your voltmeter to make this noise when you cross them. 
And then essentially you start going through, so pin one would be uh, on our C101 here. And then we take that and just find out which one it is. This says the wire color is blue, so we can, uh, look at that, first try Friday. Uh, so anyway, they, there's pin number one. So we're gonna hook that one to pin number 25. And this is the alternator uh, signal wire. So uh, when you, it's, it's like a key on power wire to your alternator to tell it to start charging. That's what wire we're doing. But there's a lot of wires. We're not gonna go over what they all do. They all do important things. So just in case uh, for you guys here, two things I just wanted to mention real quick. First of all, the diagram I typically use is not a forum one. The diagram I usually use is from RM European. So Ooh. if you guys are looking for Maybe one, that, one. that I, I like know that works, go to rmeuropean.com it'll be in the slash bmw e30 anyway it'll be in the description this is the one i always use typically uh the only thing that you need to look out for that we didn't mention uh was making sure that your your abs pin uh does not go ground to hot so depending on what year and model you're using between your engine harness and your chassis harness just make sure that your c101 doesn't contain a ground on one side and a hot on the other side for the abs that's the only thing you got to look out for otherwise the C101 will work on any model chassis. The only uh, other difference is in 1987, the 325Is and ISs had the, they did not run the tack wire through the C101. They ran it through the, uh, as a matter of fact, I think it goes through, I forget exactly where it goes, but regardless, you need to pull the blue plug on the back of your cluster and run it into the black wire coming off of that blue plug going into the cluster. So that's 1987 to get your tack working. That's what you gotta do. That's probably more in detail than you guys needed to know, but those are a few important details if you're doing this. Yep. It's it's little details like that that'll go from having your car turn, like fire up turnkey, or you have to spend eight hours figuring out what happened. All right, guys, uh, after a little bit of time with the soldering iron, we got our harness adapter here, and it looks perfect. It is uh, aftermarket, and uh, it's too bad we're not selling these. We'd make a ton of money. But uh, anyway, <laughs> this is what it should look like when you're done. Uh, be that guy, wrap it in tape, make it look cool. It's, it's, it's time well spent. You don't want like a haggard engine bay. You want a good looking one. So uh, this is what we got. It's gonna be sweet. Make your car something to be proud of, don't you know? There you go. What are you doing, by the way? Oh, this right here, I'm just putting the old E34 dipstick in, don't you know? Oh, you know? yeah, because you use the E34 pan. Got to be able to see how much oil we got in the old sucker. No, you don't. <laughs> My car doesn't have a dipstick. <laughs> if it's not leaking, it's empty. That's the only dipstick All you right. need. And, oh, jeez. Mine's got an oil sender on the side of the pan. I'm thinking about making a, a little elbow that screws in that's the right height, and then it's just gonna have a little cap. So if you take the cap off and the oil comes out, then it's got enough oil in it. If you take the cap off and the oil comes out, it's too low. Uh, we can get the, we can actually get the emission system working entirely. All we gotta do is it. take this take out, this and then we gotta hook this hose to the, the EVAP hose. And then this guy right here, we need to figure out how to run it into a drain or we can just plug it or... Run it like a oil drain? Yeah, because on the other one. So what you're supposed to do is weld another tube into the E34 one and put it right there, just like the S52. I see. But I don't really know how much care I give to that. What's so that drain off of the This filter? is This comes off the cyclone separator. So oh, it's, gotcha. the, it's the PCV, this is an oil drain. Right. So How much oil does it drain? Wouldn't that I've never seen oil coming out of it. Let me put it I that bet. way. So, so diesel trucks do that and they just point it at the ground. <laughs> yeah, I would do that, but it uh, it definitely does produce a vacuum leak. So uh, we'll, yeah. right for now, we'll just plug it and cap it. Okay, so what we're doing right now, <laughs> since I never got this to turn over in the car that it came out with, uh, we always bump started it. So what I'm gonna do is, or what Aaron's doing right now, yeah. is he's hooking the starter up to a battery right now. So hot to the, the big post ground to the the body of the starter and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this ground to this power probe so basically how this works is when i press up it sends 12 volts and i can tell it's grounded because the, the light comes on when i'm not pressing it so then what we're going to do is i hooked our adapter up and i'm going to send 12 volts to the start signal pin 18. and which is pin 18. 18 and in theory oh here let's put some oil in first good catch gents 
So in theory, if we did everything correctly, this motor ought to turn over. It will not run, but it'll at least spin. Um, so I'm just trying to verify right now. That might be bad oil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're, uh, yeah, we're verifying both the wiring harness adapter and the starter. Correct. So main, main thing is like making sure the starter's good. Secondary purpose, making sure the, the harness is wired correctly. There's like yeah. four quarts in this. Okay, that's enough to at least get it to draw. BTW. Rotella, you want to sponsor us? Do it. Right? That's all we use. Hit us up, Shell. Give us that fuel sponsor, too. It, uh, it's like racing oil for budget bitches. It is. It really is. If we could get a gas sponsor, nice dude. Can oh, you that'd be dope. Yeah. Sunoco, where you at? Come on. BP, hit us up. BP, where you at, so dog? Okay, man. They'll be in the middle of another like oil spill, and we'll be like, BP is the greatest. <laughs> okay. He said pin 18, correct? Pin 18, that's the one. So this one right here. Oh, you're crossing a couple pins this morning. Yeah, you sure were. <laughs> I think we're just not getting enough voltage to the starter. Yeah. These these cables didn't work for us on that M30 either. Not very much. No. We we hardwired it to it. But I am hearing the starter kick, so I, I'm, that, I'm confident. Roll over. I'm confident that we're good. So. I mean, we're gonna find out one way or the other. Yep. But long story short, I don't think we're gonna need to change the starter in the car. And that's the important part. Oh, that probably wasn't the best idea. Um, yeah, so the important part is we're not going to have to turn it over in the car or change the starter in the car because it is a B to the arch. <laughs> Chassis fully prepped, engine's fully prepped. I think we're good to go. I'm going to cut this little guy off so we can get this thing fully emissions compliant. All right, so a uh, fun little trick. If you don't have a gasket, get a roll of cork, a little bit of RTV, make yourself a gasket. Here's your pattern. Press it on. Ah, oh, oh. the hose cock blocked me. Line her up. Bam. This is not ghetto at all. It's not. It's actually the most efficient way to do it. Yeah, that's perfect. Standard procedure, baby. I didn't even know we had a cork roll. Aaron oh, I had it in the bottom of my toolbox. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> so typically the way that you want to do this is you want to cut all your holes out first. Um, but because I'm a backwards ass redneck, I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, you want you always want to cut your circumferences out first and then do your overall gasket profile because it's much easier to cut the holes of it when it's still in a flat, easy surface. Joined with everything else. Yeah, so, but now what I'm going to do is uh, just get the old uh, knife out, cut ourselves a hole. It's way better when you actually have gasket making tools. They what you have is a you have a punch that has a sharp edge, so it's round. Oh, I've seen. And that. you have I've different sizes. Before. Yep. I've seen those punches. Um, it has different size collars on it, and it looks like a center punch. And so what you do is you get the right size, you line it up, you put the you make an X. So usually that X you mark it through both sides, you put your center punch on it, and then you get the right size collar, put it on your punch, and you just whack, and it makes a perfect circle right through it. It's pretty trick. That's what I used to make all the gaskets back in the, the olden days. Back in Nam. <laughs> back when I was in Vietnam, that's why we used to use make all the gaskets when we was on the boat and no parts stores around. All right, so we're going to lunch. Going to grab a belt yep. and then we'll be back. We're going to grab belts for lunch. Yep, grab belts. Ah! For lunch. Ah! And that's where she's going to live. All right, so in the quest for trying to delete parasitic drag from this here motor, you know, science. Uh, we deleted power steering, as you know, in order to do that, you gotta delete, well, you don't have to delete the idler, but we deleted the idler, uh, deleted the power steering, deleted the AC, so now we needed a shorter belt. So I've snagged us a shorter belt, part number 6PK1400, for those of you interested. Um, and then we stuck a, a 24 valve head bolt through here, and she fit like a glove, so that's awesome. Good job, Aaron. Um, and at this point, I think we're actually ready to uh, stab the engine in. I have prepped this thing. We have prepped this thing about as much as I think that we can and tried to avoid a lot of the pitfalls. So in theory, this should be the first and only time we put this engine in. Um, no, but we swapped the, uh, the hose on the back. We chopped, uh, it was either an M30 or an M20 fill hose. You just want one that goes over and then towards the firewall. This one lines up already from the factory. Um, Hopefully this is the right size. We just kind of eyeballed it and hopefully it'll work. We made the gasket. We got that. Uh, I rerouted the uh, plug-in for the fuel pressure. 
regulator, which is right here. So vacuum hose for it, connector. Um, yeah, I think we're ready to stab it in. So we're gonna start stabbing. Okay, so this video is gonna end up being a little bit more technical than I originally anticipated, because we're doing some new stuff, but uh, E34 booster does definitely fit. However, with this particular intake manifold, we've got a little bit of a clearance issue. It's in, the motor's bolted in softly, um, but as you can see, it's kind of resting on the booster right here. So we're going to need to either raise the engine up higher, which we can absolutely get away with, so maybe we try that first. Or we need to shave the manifold or we need to do a different booster. So anyway, we're gonna raise the engine up a little bit. Um, the other problem that we're running into, let me get some of this crap out of the way so you guys can see over there at home. The other problem we're running into is that the brake master cylinder reservoir, it fits but as you can see, it's a bit of an impetus to the path of the intake. So my solution is I'm gonna get some double-sided barbs, run one in here, and then run an intermediate hose between the two that's about six inches long, and we're gonna mount it right there, about. So it'll just go whoop, right to there. That should work no problem. Uh, one other issue that looks like we're gonna have, looks like the throttle body, we may have some issues with that, so. Yeah, once that May goes end up on. Switching. Well, so, here, check this out. Where's the throttle cable? Well, I have not seen what the fuck It'll fit, but the problem is, is look how nasty that angle's gonna be right there. That's not gonna be super conducive for throttle cable -ness. You're not gonna have a great feel from that either. It's gonna be more resistance. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty... Pretty rough. Resisty. Yeah. Okay. Mm but, in the grand scheme of things, pretty minor issues to I deal mean, the with. the engine would start right now, so. Well, not yet, I gotta wire it. It's, you know. So, maybe I'll do that so we can hear the silly thing run and then we can address other issues. And you're gonna try and use the M3 exhaust too, aren't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet. It should work. That sweet muffler deleted boy or whatever that was? Yeah, just for now. All right, I'm gonna get to wiring and then we'll catch back up with you guys here shortly. Okay, so uh, I guess we're about to find out if this runs. All right, I'm just lying to you, YouTube. We already know it runs. It started right <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, but it, here you go. Hear it. Part of this is great other than the two things we were holding yeah and it's going to be emissions compliant we can even put the secondary air pump back in it though we yeah, won't why not <laughs> there's no reason not to heck I emissions would. selling point heck, heck emissions bro heck emissions yeah, nah, bro if you're considering we're green around here at dbo that we are we recycle cars yep we um do. so what's next you still right. got to do some reservoir so we still literally have no cooling system we have two open vacuum leaks the brake booster's not hooked up there's no brake fluid in the lines uh, the transmission isn't connected to anything at all. Uh, there's no diff in it. Yeah, no diff is a big killer. So we got about another three hours worth of work ahead of us. Dude, a ZF with a 410 is going to be fun. Yeah, this thing's going to be rowdy. It's going to do third gear burnies, no problem. Oh, yeah, it will. <laughs> yeah. Do be sweet, though, because like high speed drifting, you'll be one to one in fifth gear and just like fucking. Let's see what happens. I mean, it's only going to do about 98 miles an hour. Yeah, wow. It's going to get there real quick. <laughs> There's a couple little finicky things we got to do. This booster is honestly creating, I think, more problems than it solved, unfortunately. Well, there's, that was a spit bubble. That's cool. Um, 
yeah, so I'm gonna get to work on that. I'm gonna see if I can figure out this brake booster and get the transmission mounted. Sweet. We're still gonna drive it out of here today. I have full confidence. We are? Oh, I'm doing burnouts in this thing. I got a date. Oh, you don't have to stay. Okay. You're good. It's not, I don't think we're gonna be here that much longer. I'm, when's your date? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you better leave that in the video. <laughs> Okay, so I think we solved all the problems. As you can see, it is on. The reservoir, believe it or not, is actually connected right now. So we got two little remote hoses going down. We got ourselves a brake booster hose. We got a throttle, we got a MAF, we got a boot. It all fits. We did some uh, slightly sketchy things, but um, we don't need to get into details on that. The point is, it runs with the throttle, it's got brakes, and there's a vacuum signal to the booster. So I call that a win. Um, anyway, all we got to do is put the trans brace on it, hook up the cooling system, put the diff in it, and go do burnouts. But that's going to be tomorrow. So, we'll see you tomorrow, YouTube. Welcome back to day three of the one day BMW swap. <laughs> uh, so, Aaron and I have been jamming out today, and as you can see, got the drive shaft in, got the Guibo in. Uh, Aaron modified this goofy transmission brace that we had, and it seems to bolt up real well. It's actually pretty beef. The stock one, it's like this, it's just stamped steel. So all we did was put the trans in place, hold it in place with a pole jack, and then build this around it. So that's pretty beefy. I think that's an upgrade. Pretty cool. Um, oh, deleted the clutch delay so valve. No, I mean, I think everything's tight. What do you mean? No, no, look at the bottom of the seat. Yeah, I don't know. We're, we're just about ready to drive this out of the shop. So the only thing left to do at this point is there's a leak from my really ghetto rigged uh, brake master cylinder feed lines. So I'm gonna fix that. That's what that rag is catching. Uh, then we got to hook up the radiator and finish the uh, the steering spline. Put an exhaust on it, and then she'll be driving out. So hopefully we got about another hour worth of work. I keep saying that, but this time I hope it's true. I think it's true. Hopefully, but it should drive out of the shop very shortly. Okay, Will. I believe you have a sweet nifty fix for your leaky brake reservoir. Yeah. Oh yeah, eh. So, so here's what we're gonna do. As much as that's a cool thing, is that something you want people to know that happened? What? Uh, this this like deal? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, no. Okay, so it was leaking because the fittings that I had were pretty terrible. So I got better fittings. These are brake fluid resistant, double barbs. We're gonna put it on. One side goes in the brake reservoir. Hose goes on here. <whistles> Other side goes the uh, brake reservoir or the yeah whatever. You get the point. Double barb. It's going to go boop, and then the hose is going to go on here, and then it's going to go to the reservoir, and then you're good. We're building a remote DIY remote mount reservoir set. Yeah. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff done here. I think this car is actually legitimately almost done. We came up with a pretty cool mounting system for the uh, overflow tank over here, Aaron and I. Uh, so basically this is where it's going to mount. The uh, overflow is going to run over there. And then we're going to uh, cut a hole right down here so that the uh, overflow reservoir can have a fill spot. So that's pretty cool. I'm not sure I've ever seen anybody do that. Uh, let's see. You All got a pretty engine on. cover? Yeah, look at the engine stuff. I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off there for a little bit. That was a new mistake right there. I'm going off. Um, but yeah, engine cover's on. I got to clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna figure out some kind of a mounting system for the brake reservoir. Um, and then I think we just gotta put wheels on it and go do burnouts. Very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. I, I wanna smoke some tires on this. Dude. It's a peg leg, but. YouTube, I'm gonna say something real debatable here. I'm toying with the idea of selling my E30 M3 that has the exact same motor in it and just keeping this one. Because I think this car is going to be faster, and I don't have to care about slamming it into a wall yeah. aggressively. Look at that. That's, that's, the, that's, that's actually pretty mint. That's super mint. I'm into that. We're going to throw an exhaust and some wheels on it and wrap up a couple little details, and then we should be doing some bannies, dude.
Fine. Celebratory beer. Car is done. Like, actually done. Uh, and I'm pretty stoked on the way that it turned out. Aaron and I did a pretty killer job on this. Um, key features here. Going to point out. We got the uh, overflow reservoir going through the chassis rail. Very good. Shiny. Very shiny. Uh, zip ties. Very good zip ties. These are great zip ties. These are the best zip ties. Let me tell you about that. Okay. Uh, other cool features. Full floating brake reservoir. This is for speed, okay? This is only for speed. Well, that way it is dampened from the vibrations. Yeah, so. yeah, it's a vibration dampening brake reservoir. Yeah. Um, other key features, uh, steering wheel cantered 30 degrees to the right. Speed feature, okay? So it basically, it's like advanced timing on an engine. We don't need to get into the science behind it, but trust me, it's for the best. Um, no, all kidding aside, this thing actually turned out super baller. It, Turned out pretty clean. I'm pretty pleased with the way it looks. We were able to clean the wiring up real nice since this is a 318. We got all the relays tucked in. I uh, got rid of the E36 wiring dealio. Uh, this popped off, but that's okay. We'll, we'll fix that later. But um, yeah, it turned out really nice. We got to put an air filter on it, but that's, I think, literally the only thing left. It has an exhaust, it has a radiator, it has lots of things. And I'm so confident this is what I'm going to do. Oh, okay. A little bit of beer. I think we nailed it. And I'm so confident that I'm going to pour $20 worth of coolant directly into it. If you hear dribbling on the on the ground, we have a problem. I hear air escaping from the bleed screw. screw. Yeah. It is the bleed screw. Yeah. So we're good. Nothing but the BMW blue, the best blue. So, yeah. I won't get too scientific about it. But I don't care what you're building. This is the best coolant. It has like the highest boiling temperature out of anything, so use it. So anyway, uh, I think we're ready to do Bernie's as soon as we get this fan, on. oh wait, sorry fan. Uh, get the the coolant all filled up. And bled. Yeah, so, man, these things are hit or miss. They either like bleed like that, or you spend an hour and a half, or you never get them bled. Yep. There's three, there's three options for E30s. They're tough, impossible, or easy. Did I hear you used uh, bleach to clean up the engine cover? I did. Nice. It looks really scrubbing good though, doesn't bubbles. it? Look how look how crispy that is. Scrubbing bubbles. bubbles. Yeah, scrubbing bubbles with the bleach. They do the work so you don't have to. Professional detailer will in the haws. Let me tell you, if JJ Bowman is watching this, he'll be real proud. That was my first boss back in uh, about circa 2002, who I used to detail boats for back in the day when I was a little wakeboard punk. It moves! It's a win! But does it make smoke? One tire smoke. One tire smoke. smoke. It is a 410 rear gear though, and a one-to-one -one overdrive. It ought to do a hell of a burnout. <laughs> it likes that rev limiter, dude. It's gonna be a good run of car. Yeah, it is. Right. <laughs> you know, one tire's real happy. Yeah. And I keep forgetting he's got a 410 in it, so maybe second gear's best. For a test drive? Uh, sure. Why not? Want to go see if it's fast? Yeah, I want to see what come it's for, like. Come for a ride. I don't think I've. I've been in one of these. Damn! It just burns the tire off, dude. You'll notice I say tire, not tires. Yeah. It's quick, dude. Yeah, they get by. This is a good little runner. Yeah, it is. Good little engine. Hell yeah. This ain't slick, dude. I might have to keep this going. 
Piss out of that diff. Dude, it's been a while since you've like driven one of these pretty hard, huh? I drive my M3 hard. Oh, that's true. Hard. Yeah, I heard you leave the I other have, day. I have no mercy on that car. Yeah. This is a fucking great car. Jesus. Yeah, the engine's in like great shape too. Oh, yeah. What Leave a it. great little ripper. What a, you know? good, what a good ripper. What a good little boy. What a, yeah, what a good what a, boy. This is a great little boy. This is a great boy. Dude, this thing rips. Right? Life rips, bruh. Open diff life is a cock block. I hate. I hate open diffs. YouTube, I know this was a weird video, but uh, I appreciate you guys following along. I appreciate you always following along. Uh, spread the word so we can do more silly things. And uh, stay tuned for more shenanigans. Have a great night. Have a great day. Have a great morning. Peace.